Hello, I'm Pastor Mark Tust of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Winnipeg, Manitoba. We're located at 2528 King Edward Street. We are on the internet at emmanuelwinnipeg.ca. Emmanuel is spelled with an I. You can email us at emmanueloffice at mymts.net or give us a call, 204-632-6911. This is the midweek devotion for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We pray you, O Lord, to keep our tongues from evil, and our lips from speaking deceit, that as your holy angels continuously sing praises to you in heaven, so may we at all times glorify you on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is 719, 719, I Leave All Things to God's Direction. Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. 
On the day I called you, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Our Old Testament lesson from Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 1 through 20. When the Lord your God cuts off the nations whose land the Lord your God is giving you, and you dispossess them and dwell in their cities and in their houses, you shall set apart three cities for yourselves and the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. You shall measure the distances and divide into three parts the area of the land that the Lord your God gives you as a possession, so that any manslayer can flee to them. This is the provision for the manslayer, who by fleeing there may save his life. If anyone kills his neighbor unintentionally, without having hated him in the past, as when someone goes into the forest with his neighbor to cut wood, and his hand swings the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slips from the handle and strikes his neighbor so that he dies, he may flee to one of these cities and live. Lest the avenger of blood and hot anger pursue the manslayer and overtake him, because the way is long, and strike him fatally. Though the man did not deserve to die, since he had not hated his neighbor in the past, therefore I command you, you shall set apart three cities. If the Lord, your God, enlarges your territory, as he has sworn to your fathers, and gives you all the land that he promised to give you, to give to your fathers, provided you are careful to keep all this commandment, which I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, and by walking ever in his ways. Then you shall add three other cities to these, lest innocent blood be shed in your land, that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, and so the guilt of bloodshed be upon you. But if anyone hates his neighbor and lies in wait for him and attacks him and strikes him fatally and so that he dies, and he flees into one of these cities, then the elders of his city shall send and take him from there and hand him over to the avenger of blood so that he may die. Your eyes shall not pity him, but you shall purge the guilt of innocent blood from Israel so that it may be well with you. You shall not move your neighbor's landmark, which the men of old have set, and the inheritance that you will hold in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. A single witness shall not suffice against a person for any crime or for any wrong in connection with any offense that he has committed. Only on the evidence of two witnesses, or of three witnesses, shall a charge be established. If a malicious witness arises to accuse a person of wrongdoing, then both parties to the dispute shall appear before the Lord, for the priests and the judges who are in office in those days. The judges shall inquire diligently, and if the witness is a false witness, and has accused his brother falsely. And you shall do to him as he had meant to do to his brother. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. And the rest shall hear and fear, 
and shall never again commit any such evil among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It sounds like a bit of a strange reading, but Jesus, our Lord appoints cities of refuge in circumstances where accidental death occurs or what needs to happen if a purposeful death occurs, what the process should be for executing justice, as you heard many times in the reading. The land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. That land is a gift. Being in that land is a privilege given by the Lord. So the Lord wants those commandments kept. And as we read on through Scripture, we sinful humans are not able to keep the commandments perfectly. The land that they were possessing, they did enjoy for a time, but they did turn and follow other gods. Those refuge cities are meant to be a place of safety, much like this, the Lord's house being a sanctuary, a place of coming and receiving good news, forgiveness of sins given by Christ alone for you that you may hear, believe, and have faith in him who is the one living God. Our gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother what you, have, you, what you would have gained for me is given to God, he did not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition... You made void the word of God, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. He called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. The disciples came and said to him, Do you know that even the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. Jesus said, Are you still without understanding? Do you not see that what goes ever, whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach as, and is expelled? What comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. This is the Gospel of the Lord. A verse for meditation is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. The title for this devotion from Faith Alone is Loving Our Neighbors. 
After having heard and accepted the true teaching about faith, the Apostle Paul seriously admonishes Christians to practice genuine good works. This is because remnants of sin remain in those who are justified. These remnants resist faith and divert us from doing true good works. Human reason and the sinful nature resist the spirit in believers and control unbelievers. Reason is naturally inclined toward hypocritical superstition. It wants to measure God according to its own thoughts rather than according to his word. It does works of its own choosing more enthusiastically than the ones God commanded. That is why faithful teachers must teach and impress on people true love and true good works just as much as they teach faith. No one should think that they fully understand this command, love your neighbor. Certainly this command is very short and very easy as far as the words are concerned. But where are the teachers and learners who actually practice this in life? These words serve one another, serve one another humbly in love, and love your neighbor as yourself are eternal words. No one can think about urge and practice them enough. It is remarkable that believers will immediately have troubled consciences if they fail to do something trivial. But these same people feel nothing at all when they neglect love and when their hearts are not sincere and affectionate toward their neighbor. Unfortunately, this happens every day. For they don't regard God's command to love as highly as their own superstitions. Let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is 918. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. 918. Fears subside, death of death, 
and hell's destruction, let me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. I will ever give to thee. If you have any questions or comments regarding this video, please feel free to contact me. 431-335-6219. Go in peace. You have been served by the living God. Thanks be to God.